That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Yesterday, the media just absolutely peppered Trump with questions about him retweeting something that at the tail end of it had the hashtag fire Fauci. So, and there are a lot of people that are upset with him. They kind of run with this narrative that Trump has been duped and that Fauci is, is either knowingly or unknowingly, either just grossly incompetent or lying to him. And because of that, Fauci needs to be fired. There was a point that one particular person made and Trump retweeted it. And because that retweet, Remember, Trump didn't say it. It was somebody that he retweeted their treat, uh, tweet and didn't give any commentary on it. They assumed that because he had the hashtag in there, fire Fauci, that it must be that Trump really wanted to fire Fauci or that Trump was going to fire Fauci. Now, there's a couple things that I, I want to bring up. First of all, it's important to understand some of the context that this is taking place in because this is not operating inside a vacuum. The media has been trying to, for about two to three weeks now, really sort of push this narrative that Fauci is the hero that is trying to save the country from Trump just completely destroying it and not caring about it. They, they've been trying to craft this soap opera that's going on behind the scenes that, frankly, I've seen very little evidence of. I know that Fauci and Trump have probably disagreed on how to handle a few things, and I'm certain that they, especially as much as both of them are on TV right now, have said a few things that don't agree with one another, but that would happen even if it were the most ardent Trump supporter and Trump himself. That's going to happen if you're on camera that much in just a short amount of time. So the media has been trying to create this fable that is going on, and I don't know, maybe it's going on, but I haven't seen any evidence for it. The media is making this up, so far as I can tell, completely out of whole cloth that Dr. Fauci and Trump are, they hate each other, they are in wild disagreement, and Trump doesn't want to listen to Fauci, and Fauci is basically trying to struggle the, the reins of power away from him, which is also stupid because Fauci has no power. Fauci influences power, but he has no power himself. If Trump wanted to ignore Fauci, he could. That is his prerogative. He's the president of the United States. So there's a myriad of reasons why this whole narrative that the media has been going with for a while now is stupid. That being one of the chief arguments against it. But here's the thing that we need to be aware of, because truth, two things can be true at once. You can believe both of these things simultaneously and not be in contradiction of yourself. One, a, reti a retweet does not constitute agreement. It doesn't. I retweet people all the time that I disagree with. I've retweeted AOC. I've retweeted all kinds of people. Sometimes those tweets contain things that I disagree with. Now, normally I include with that a disclaimer saying that I don't agree with it. Sometimes I just let the tweet speak for itself. And the average person within the Twitter sphere understands this, that just because you retweet somebody does not mean you're agreeing with them. It's also possible to agree with part of a retweet and not another one. Here's another thing that can also be true. Retweeting something that you disagree with without giving that con uh, that disclaimer or that comment, it it's dumb. It is. And so those are the two things that can be true at the same time. Retweeting something that contains something that you disagree with without adding that disclaimer, bad idea, but it also does not necessarily mean the person retweeting the thing agrees with it. This is not a difficult standard for people to understand, but the media had a really, really hard time understanding it yesterday because they desperately want this narrative that they've been pushing for a couple weeks now that Dr. Fauci and Donald Trump secretly hate each other and are not on the same page, and Trump is constantly trying to undermine him, which again is ridiculous because Trump is the one with all the control and with all the power. And so they're wanting to cast it this way because they believe orange man bad and Trump can never be right. And so if there's a lot of good things happening, they can chalk that all up to Dr. Fauci. I'll use a quick analogy here to help you understand this that everybody in the state will readily understand. There are certain sects of the Auburn faithful. When something goes r right on the field, it must be because Gus turned over control of it to him and then... When something goes horribly wrong, it's because Gus took over and is calling the plays. 
which may or may not be true, but the point is it's an unfalsifiable claim. And what typically I think is going on is that Auburn fans that don't like Gus Malzahn are just scapegoating him. And if anything goes wrong, it's always Gus Malzahn's fault. And if anything goes right, it's because Gus Malzahn took a step back and offensive coordinator took over. This is a mind-numbingly aggravating thing to deal with when you're watching an Auburn football game. But the same thing is going on and playing out in real time here. If the federal government ever does something right, it's just because what Donald Trump did is he stu stood back and let Dr. Fauci basically call the play on this one. And if anything goes wrong, it's because Trump had some influence into it. This is what this is basically the narrative that the the media is trying to cast here. And so th they really loved the fact that he retweeted somebody with the hashtag Fire Fauci. He didn't say it, but he was essentially quoting somebody else saying it, and they just went giddy with anticipation. But here's the thing about it that the media is forgetting, because I'm older than a month old, and I can remember when the media did not hold people to this standard because I did this story, this exact story. I didn't pull this from the internet. I pulled it from my old show notes. Back on March 17th, because I think the tweet was actually issued on the 16th, you can go back and look at a tweet by Rashida Tlaib, for example. This is just less than a month ago. This was a tweet by David Hogg that Rashida Tlaib retweeted, Don't let this administration address COVID-19 like our national gun violence epidemic. F a national day of prayer. We need immediate comprehensive action. So what happened with this tweet is that it was immediately retweeted by Representative Rashida Tlaib. You remember, of course, when the media found her at a press conference and peppered her with questions asking if she really thought that if the National Day of Prayer was the right thing or that she hated the National Day of Prayer or if she was anti-Christian or any of that stuff. Oh, wait, you don't remember that because it never happened. You see, when Rashida Tlaib retweets something controversial, the media just forgets to ask her about it. I looked through as much, even today, went through as much of the news as I could. I, I went through like three or four pages of Google on their news section, and I also uh, went through different news organizations and searched their individual websites. I found plenty of hits on The Blaze and Conservative Review and The Daily Wire and Washington Examiner. You know how many hits I found on The Washington Post, The New York Times? I didn't see one. Maybe it was there and I missed it. But I didn't see any coverage from the left on this. And then because a bunch of people on Twitter, not news organizations, but because people on Twitter called her out on retweeting David Hogg saying, F the National Day of Prayer, Rashida Tlaib came out with this explanation. Let me be clear as someone who has been praying through all of this and as someone who has attended the National Prayer Breakfast, my retweet was not an attack on prayer, it was to bring public attention to the need for a meaningful action to combat this public health crisis. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I, I think I'm understanding what you're saying now. You're saying that just because you retweeted something does not necessarily mean you agree with it. Now, the difference in this and what Donald Trump retweeted is because, A, this was not in a hashtag that is essentially just a tag. Again, you don't even necessarily, the person tweeting doesn't necessarily agree with the hashtag. I don't know how many of my articles about abortion or videos about abortion that I've posted with the hashtag pro-choice, hoping that other people are going to find it that are pro-choice and watch it and maybe let it change their mind. Just because I'm tweeting out pro-choice or things like hashtag abortion is a, Rome, a woman's right or abortion rights, or something, that doesn't mean I agree with it. It means I want people searching for those keywords to find my tweet. This wasn't a, a hashtag at the end of it. It was David Hogg saying F the National Day of Prayer and Rashida Tlaib retweeting it again without comment. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what Rashida Tlaib means by that, but I can't come up with another reason for that. I mean, that's all he said. It was a very short tweet, and, and really all he said was F the National Day of Prayer. I can't think of a reason why Rashida Tlaib would have retweeted that if that's not really how she felt. But nonetheless, that same standard was not applied to Trump by the media. They ignored it when Rashida Tlaib did it. 
when Trump did it, oh, we've got to ask him all these questions and make sure if that's really what he believes or not. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.